let's see what we're going to brew today. I'll give it a little thought on the way out to the to the garage there, to the brew shop. Yeah, let's give it a little thought because we're going to brew something. <laughs> We decided on a dunkel. We did almost a dunkel before, so we're gonna do almost a dunkel again. How you doing? Batch 101. So we're going to use the advantage to that to let the mash tun warm up to uh, uh, claim the, to the regular temperature here. Acclimate, I guess. The word would be, oh! Okay. That's a live one. <laughs> so what I did here, besides drop the kettle almost, <laughs> she's empty. Um, there's just a little in there. <laughs> As I took the rest of the water, I purposely came in at eight and a half, almost nine gallons. And I, I got striking water here at seven gallon level. And I'm going to keep a couple gallons here on the hot burner for a spark if I need it. It's all been treated with, uh, I use some malic acid to bring the pH up the level. So we're ready to go here on the dunkel. We're at one. She was at 164. She's down to 160, so we're going to go in. And I think the cold, uh, my cold grain, she's going to bring it right to 155, right what we're looking for. So. Now, once again, we don't stir heavy here. My wife has done this so many times, she knows you don't even have to stir sometimes. I see one guy on line there, he done. <laughs> He just dumped the whole five-gallon bucket right in there and stirred it later. And there's nothing wrong with that. It depends on your mash tun, type of mash tun you got, if it's going to cause a problem with too much stirring. There's that pair of red coming through. Uh, red, was it red something? Uh, it wasn't pear of red, it was a different one. It was a wheat, some sort of red wheat, I think. I have to check the sheet. <laughs> Yeah, it's a dunkel, so she should be brown. It's a German type here. It's got the Munich malts in here. I like the flavor of the grains as they were going in. Oh, yeah. So I think it's going to be delicious. We put a, just a shade of coffee. Or, uh, Chocolate. Chocolate. Just a little bit to act as a darkening agent. We made this one before and we changed the recipe. Where's your camera pointing here? It was in the bucket. Now you're on an angle. We use a candy thermometer. It's one of the most accurate thermometers you can get. I've had uh, some cheap uh, ones from a foreign country, uh, China, and they were so far off. One gauge I had digital was 30 degrees Fahrenheit off. And the beer was wrecked. That's, I had to throw it out. It was no go. And I did wreck the beer. buy that cheap stuff anymore so I'm getting 152 here right where we want to be I was looking for 154 but 152 is going to have to do that's pretty good and the mash tun's warm so she's going to hold her temperature this time so 152 is the official dough in on the dunkel so we'll start the verloft on the the dunkel beer here <clears throat> oh the smell is just 
the smell. We put just like, I think it was three, maybe too much. We put a little chocolate in here, I forget. We'll have to check the sheet there. And once again, Borloffing is nothing more than running a couple pictures of work back through the top of your, your mash tun here. Trying not to stir the grain bed too bad for clarity here. We're doing nice. I like the color. She looks a little reddish like the last batch I made. But uh, she's almost dunkled. We call it almost a dunkle because it's not going to be fermented with uh, lager yeast. We're going to be using USO5 like we did before, so she's close enough to a dunkle. The name of this beer is probably going to be, is she a dunkle? How you doing? She's going to be a, a dunkle, we call it. <laughs> uh, almost a dunkle. Like I said before, she's fermented with uh, USO5 yeast instead of lager yeast. So she's almost a dunkel. Why wouldn't it be? We have uh, lasted asparagus drippings coming into this kettle while that kettle's got, she's all fired up and she's, uh, she's started to boil. Amarillo hops and Cascade for 60 minutes go into the boil. And about 10 minutes in, we got the first addition of hops in there. And I hope we got enough gas to finish this. I hate running out of fuel. So. She's smelling really good, folks. She's smelling really, really good. Almost a dunkle, too. All right, two, one. Oh, nice and loud. I can hear that a mile away, right? Hey, sorry? Can you set a timer for 15 minutes? Okay, 15 minutes and counting. Dunk of shame. So, in our last 15 minutes, we're going to end up getting a reading, uh, just about a flame out with, on, our, on our refractometer, and we'll get a reading. We're going to put in our Irish moss right now, last 15 minutes. And boil, looks nice in there. This is our almost a dunkle. So, Irish moss is in. That's a fining agent. Look at the reaction you get when you dump that in there. Look at that. If she didn't know better, she might come right over the top there. That's something else, huh? So what we're going to do, it's like another hot break. <laughs> she just settled. So that's in. And we add uh, oh, one of our favorite hops in the last 15 minutes is the uh, Hirschbrocker. 2.5 alpha acids. These are just so tasty and nice. I use them in most of my stouts and my porters, and they're in 15 minutes. I'll get the work chiller ready to, for the flame out, and, uh, and we'll be in the fermenter. We got some snow moving in tonight, so I wanted to get this brew in the bag here. So we'll get a reading on this, too, right now. Actually, 10, uh, 1052. I'm happy with that. 1052 on the refractometer. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know, write that down. <clears throat> I always shut the tank off first so the hose gets empty of gas. And I shut the regulator off. We're taking the ball sacks out. <laughs> Take her out. <clears throat> Let it drip a minute. Get the cooler in, get your hose on. And we're chilling. Here's a cold beer. Since you've been working so hard. Alright, it usually takes about five minutes for my water here to cool it down. And as time goes by, Lake Erie gets colder, colder, and colder. And I've been I've chilled it down already in minutes. Five yeast. Everything's been sanitized. 
I'm going to pitch the yeast. Get that in. We're going to use our uh, Fermate K instead of Fermate O. I'm going to get that into the, into the fermenter also. About a spoonful. All we're going to do is finish our, uh, our pour. All right, we got our cap on, and the almost a dunkle. She's a dunkle. Is she a dunkle? <laughs> Is she a dunkle? I'm going to get a reading on it and probably go to keg here. So always take your bubbler out so you don't get a back suck. I say that a million times out of there that's just some yeast that's nothing and, I, and that new valve turned so easy so we'll set our sample off to the side here and we'll let it sit there and come back get a reading in a few minutes she finished at uh, is she at Dunkel she finished at 1020 nice we're going to keg after 14 days the snake of loveliness I need to look in there to see what level I'm at. I'm about here right now. All right, we just wrestled uh, the Shia Dunkel into place here. And we still got the Imperial Stout on tap here. And that is a good beer in itself. No leaks that we can see, so we'll let that chill down. Okay, after 12 days carbonating, is she a Dunkel? Especially is she done? <laughs> Let's see what we get here. And 12 days carbonating. Yeah, not much of a head. Very small head. We'll take this one over to our uh, our drinking couch and we'll give it a little review here. Okay. Yeah, there's not much of a head on there. I don't know if that's carbonation or just because uh, the recipe. She's uh, she's dark. She's a brown beer. Definitely brown. I call it, is it, I call it, is she a dunkel? Because it's uh, almost a dunkel. A dunkel's made with uh, uh, lager yeast. I did USO5. I went against the, the grain on that one. This is the second time I've done it. We call it almost a dunkel, that's why. So she's pretty good. I know she's good. I made this before. Ah, she smells clean. Definitely smells clean. Ah, I smell a little bit of chocolate, of course. It's not fair. I know I got chocolate in it. Uh, about an ounce, I forget. Some Cara Aroma Munich Malt, for sure. Uh, some uh, Maris Otter. Getting that little bready smell. So we're going to get a taste test on this here. So, Oh, yeah. The hops I used were... Uh, Amarillo, Cascade, and Hirschbrocker. Of course, I got a, a, a the list is up there someplace. She's a good taste in beer. Mm. A little bready, a little nutty, a little caramel, caramelly. You can definitely taste that new malt I used. Uh, I'm not uh, that familiar with it. But she's pretty good here. So what we're going to do is we, <laughs> we're pairing it with a bowl of chili. How you doing? There's my uh, there's my homemade chili here we just made yesterday. Came from the fridge. She'll pair well with a bowl of chili. No, no question about it. But she's a, she's a brown beer. She's almost a dunkel. I don't know if the, even the color is picking up on that in the light. Not much of a head. Not much of a head at all, but she is carbonated. We'll have to work on that. It could be uh, that I didn't use too many car carapils. Oh, yeah. Gonna pair well with the chili. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it does. It pairs really well with my chili. 
big chunks of hamburger. How you doing? <laughs> oh, God. Mm. So until next time, if I'm on camera there, if I even turned it on to record, stay thirsty and uh, until next time, proust. Still eating my chili. So we'll take beer number two here because it pairs really well with the chili. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> She's a good one. Almost a dunkle. Is she a dunkle? <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> All right. All right. A little hot back here. I got a big fire going. And it's like 90 degrees. And you're eating some hot chili. And it's, uh... <laughs> it makes you hotter inside, if you know what I mean. But boy... This is a great, uh, almost a dunkle. Is she a dunkle? Almost. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <clears throat> this is only like the third or fourth beer we drew out of the keg. I had a friend of mine taste it the other day. He said he was. He said he liked it. He said it was good. I don't know how good. He said he liked it better than my Imperial Stout. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. So yeah, we're eating our chili here. It's it's uh <laughs> really good with the pears well. I think I said that before. Almost gone. <laughs> mm. The wife makes an excellent excellent chili. Excellent, excellent chili. So we're just sitting here watching New York City ready to get nailed here on the live stream here. On a live cam and uh Times Square. <laughs> Let the snow hit those sons of bitches. Proust! Again, until next time. Ah. Oh, still recording? I thought I was done.